Hello everyone, my name is Neil Robinson, Product Marketing Manager for Tensilica Products. And today I'm going to be talking to you about SSD controllers. Uh, we're going to start off with the basics uh, and then look at the trends in the industry. And then next week we'll follow up with some more details on Tensilica. So an SSD controller comprises a host, which is something like your PC, which wants to read or write commands to the flash memory system uh, at the other side. So flash down here, the NAND flash, has a very good property in that it's very cheap. And very cheap because it's very dense. So you, you, people tend to use this for high, high capacity storage. But the downside is actually that it wears out over time. And what, what wearing out means that the more times you write to a specific page within the flash, the more likely you are to read errors back in future. Now, some errors can be corrected, uh, but after a while, writing lots and lots of times, you can't correct them anymore, and that particular page is no longer usable. So if we look at what the host does when it tries to read and write data, it actually supplies a logical address for that information. Now, if that logical address was mapped straight to one of the pages in the flash, and it was to write and write and write to that same page many, many times, then you'll find that the flash page will get worn out. And as soon as that becomes worn out, really the flash is not useful anymore. So the whole thing becomes unusable. So the job of the SSD controller, in addition to managing the host and NAND control interface, is to actually make sure that the wearing out happens more evenly so that you get a much longer life out of this device. So the actual logic is called the flash translation layer. And what that logic does is it actually maps the logical address from the host to the um, physical address that's in the flash. And that process is generally called wear leveling. If we look at some of the trends in the industry, then you'll see that the biggest trend overall is a, is a seeking of higher performance and lower energy consumption. Now, these two things together are required both at the high-end enterprise class. So if you're looking at um, data centers, which have a lot of equipment, we're looking at reducing the cooling costs there. So they're, they're looking for high performance and low energy. And right down to the portable and mobile devices, which are battery powered. If we look at the host side, one of the things that it's having to deal with these days is on multiple protocols. So we have NVMe today as the most, most uh, modern standard. And then previously, we have SATA and even other, other protocols. Uh, and in addition to that, multiple lanes. What that means is that in order to get high performance, we're looking at having multiple uh, data streams going in and out of the host to get higher level of parallelism. From the flash controller, the actual amount of data that's being stored in the flash is so high that the, just the management of that mapping is becoming so high that the memory systems being used have to, have to be cheaper. So there's a movement to DDR memory. And when you go to DDR memory, you have to deal with much higher latencies and actually a, limit, a more limited bandwidth. Uh, and then looking at the, the NAND control side, this is having to deal with also adding multiple channels. And that's the same as the lanes, really adding multiple paths to the flash so we get higher level of parallelism and data throughput. But in addition, it's having to deal with the differences between the different vendors. So the flash vendors have slightly different characteristics. So the NAND controls having to, to deal with the, the slight differences which allow them to uh, make best use of the flash and make it last as long as possible. The, the protocols and lanes on the host today are have traditionally been done with RTL, but we're actually seeing a move to add processes there to give the flexibility for the, the multiple protocols. The FTL is typically done with a processor today, or one, one or more processors, and we're looking to add offload to that so that we can hide the latencies that are, are there with the DDR and actually make the most efficient use of the bandwidth that's available. And then on the NAND side, again today, that's often done with in RTL, but there's also a trend to add more processors there so that you can handle the, the various vendor uh, differences. That's it from today. Look out for next week's Whiteboard Wednesday when we talk about how Tensilica processes enable you to meet these trends efficiently.